we're going to be looking at electrical symbols and circuits. So these are the electrical symbols that you need to know. The switches. And then the next three are looking at what provides the electrical energy. So an alternating power supply. A cell, which is a direct current supply. And a battery of cells, which is again a direct current supply. We then have an ammeter, which is used to determine the current through a component. And here is a voltmeter, which measures the voltage or the potential difference across a component. The next five, you can see, have the basic rectangle shape, which represents a resistor. Here being the variable resistor, the arrow through the rectangle. This one is representing a thermistor, and that is a temperature dependent resistor. So the resistance changes with temperature for a thermistor. This one is a light dependent resistor. So these arrows are representing the light which is shining on your resistor. And so the resistance changes with light intensity. And then this one is the fuse. The next two represent diodes. And a diode only allows current to flow in one direction. So the triangle part of the diode symbol indicates the direction in which it will allow current through. And this one is a light emitting diode, so the arrows are representing the light which is being emitted from the diode. And the final symbol is the lamp. We're next going to look at a circuit diagram showing how two lamps can be switched on and off independently of each other. So here's the diagram. If we close the top switch, lamp A lights up, and that's because we've got a complete circuit loop for the current to flow through. And if we close the bottom switch, lamp B lights up, and again, that's because we've got a complete circuit loop for the current to flow through. So lamps A and B can be switched on or off independently of each other. This circuit, however, wouldn't work. And that's because if we close the top switch, yes, lamp A is switched on, but lamp B is off. And that's because we have a complete circuit loop for the current to flow. But if we open the top switch and close the bottom switch, lamp B will not light up and that's because the circuit loop is not complete for the current to flow. There's a break in the circuit so current cannot flow through B. So in order for B to light up we'd also need to close the top switch. But as a result of that lamp A will also light up because you've got this complete circuit loop to light up A and then you've got the second circuit loop that lights up B. So you can see that the lamps A and B are not working independently of each other. The next circuit diagram we're going to be looking at is connecting a diode in series with a lamp so that it lights up. So here is the circuit diagram. First we need to look at the direction of the current in this circuit. So what we do is we look at the cell is making our battery and the long line represents the positive terminal of the cell or battery and the small line represents the negative terminal of the battery. So current flows from positive to negative of a battery and so in this case the current is flowing anti-clockwise. And if you remember what I said earlier about the diode, it only allows current to flow through it in one 
direction and the triangle indicates the direction and it, it will allow current to flow through it. So you can see the triangle is forming an arrow with the wires of the circuit. So it's a, that which is indicating the direction it will allow current to flow through it. So that is from left to right and that's in the same direction that is coming from the battery. So this is allowing current to flow through it, which hence will allow current to flow through the lamp and so it lights up. We say that in this case, the diode is being connected in forward bias because it's allowing current to flow through it. If we were to reverse the connection of the diode, so we'd call it a reverse bias connection, then the lamp would not light up. And that's because we know from the battery of cells that current flowing from the batteries from the positive to the negative. So the current is flowing in an anti-clockwise direction in the circuit. And so that is in the opposite direction that the diode would allow current to flow because the diode, according to the arrow of the diode, will allow current to flow through in a clockwise direction. And as the current is actually flowing in an anti-clockwise direction, no current can pass through the diode and so the lamp doesn't light up. And what you can consider, think of it like this line is like a barrier stopping the current from going through the diode. We're next going to look at a circuit diagram that can show how we can vary the brightness of the lamp. And so what we would need to do is to connect a variable resistor in series with the lamp um, by changing the resistance of our variable resistor. It will change how much current is flowing in the circuit and hence the brightness of the lamp. So by decreasing the resistance, you will get more current flowing in the circuit and so you'll have a brighter lamp. And finally, we're going to look at a circuit diagram where you can measure the voltage across the lamp and the current through it. So here we have an ammeter, which we need to connect in series with the lamp, and that will measure the current through it. And the voltmeter needs to be connected parallel to the lamp, so it can measure the voltage or the potential difference across the lamp.